All right, guys. Well, uh, we're going to get started here. Thanks so much for, uh, for being here and being a part of our third installment of Line Change with Coach Thomas. It uh, looks like it's just two tables tonight, so you guys are going to get a lot of attention. Um, any question that you could possibly ever have to ask, you can ask it, and we'll answer it for you. So that's the good news. Um, first thing I want to do is uh, sort of recap the weekend. Um, the Mayhem, they snapped a pretty long winless skid, which was huge. Uh, they beat, uh, beat Evansville on Thursday night, a 6-2 final. A huge win for the team to uh, get back on the winning trail and get their morale back. Um, Coach, I need to ask you what the feeling was like uh, in the locker room and on the bench uh, after that one was in the bag on Thursday night last week. No, obviously it's a good feeling snapping a, a streak like that. But um, no, it was a good feeling. I told the guys it was a must win, so I'm glad that mm. they, you know, they showed up um, and we got the two points. And um, you know, the rest of the weekend, um, still thought we played a pretty decent game. We just didn't get the results that uh, we wanted. Yeah, and, uh, and then you guys made the trip up to Huntsville uh, on Friday and Saturday. Uh, it's always a hostile building to play in. They uh, do a good job lighting it up, and they did again this past weekend. Um, we got to go up as a front office staff. We had our own sort of takeaways that we took from it, but what were the, some, of the, some of the takeaways that you guys had from the weekend uh, from a hockey standpoint? Me or uh, anyone can chime in, yeah. Did you guys hear that, or you want me to? You got to start, Josh. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, well, what I got took away from it obviously is you know that's a team that's they're the defending champs um they showed they showed up that weekend and um in front of a great crowd like they always do they pretty pretty mm -hmm. much have a sold out crowd there every game and um you know they do a lot of good stuff there and um fortunately we didn't like i said get the results that we wanted um well we played played better than we have been now uh, zach you can feel free to chime in on this one um Nick Minerva, he got his first goal with the Mayhem. Uh, I could see just, you know, hundreds of miles away watching on SPHL Live how fired up he was, and he's a pretty fiery guy, as it is. Um, I can only imagine how he was feeling after that one. Uh, Coach or, or Zach, you guys care to elaborate on the, the feeling of Nick Minerva after that strike? Well, I got to ask, why am I exempt from this one? <laughs> well, he's a fellow defense. I guess no. you played defense yeah, with him, no, too. Yeah, not a big deal. That's right. a rover guy. Yeah, Ron's, uh, if, if, if your feelings are hurt, you can chime in by all means. Yeah, they're hurt. They're hurt. <laughs> I think everyone is pretty excited for him. Like, we've talked about it for a while now that he uh, hasn't scored yet, uh, his first pro goal. And uh, it happened pretty quick in the third period, five seconds in. So we were all pretty excited on the bench. I know Mike's was pretty pumped. So it was a good feeling for everyone. And I know he was happy about it. So Yeah, and that was, I think that was the fastest goal anyone on the team had scored in terms of uh, after a period started, just five seconds. Uh, and just like that, the game was tied. Um, all right, Coach, last question for you before I uh, sort of shift the attention to our guests here. Uh, we had a, a new signing uh, today. Um, Josh Keplinger uh, is forward, senior captain from Lawrence University. Uh, you saw him practice today. What sort of prompted that decision to bring uh, Josh aboard, and uh, in what areas do you feel he'll be able to help the team? Yeah, obviously this time um, with college guys becoming available, you kind of want to get a, a look at them now and obviously for, you know, years after this year and the year after that. So um, just wanted to bring him in, get a fresh face in here. And um, he's a kid who's pretty decent sized. Um, he's got a good shot. He can put the puck in the net. So um, today it was his first practice today. He's been off the ice for a little bit, so I could kind of tell he's a little winded. Mm -hmm. But uh, for the most part, he looked pretty well. I had him... Um, on a line with uh, Levesque and Klutcha um, just to start today in practice, and he didn't look um, out of place, so that, that's a good thing. Do you expect uh, that to most likely be his line based on the way he played uh, on, uh, on Thursday night? Um, I hope so. It all depends. Um, obviously, Soper's off the IR, but I'm not sure right now if he's going to start the weekend, so okay. it all depends on that. Um, might have to switch um, the lines just around for the, maybe the first two games this weekend, so we'll see. Now, Seth, I want to address the next question to you here. Um, you've made uh, quite the impression this season as uh, being somebody who can really do it all, um, sort of a, a renaissance man. You've scored goals, you've assisted, you've played forward, you've played defense, you've fought. Uh, you even coached in a game back on December 14th Not against good. Fayetteville. Um, has that always just sort of been your personality, is uh, somebody who will just do whatever it takes to, to help the team win? Uh, pretty much, yeah. I, uh, I mean, coming in last year with Kersey as head coach, uh, 
I told him, I said, whatever you need me to do to help us win a championship, let me know because I'll play whatever role you want. Um, I came back this year with Coach Leo and told him the same thing. And um, I don't really care how we win or how big or how little my part is. Granted, I'd love a big part and a lot of responsibility. Um, but if that's, you know, if, and if that's the role I have to, uh, have to take on, then I will. Um, if the team's winning, I'm happy. Uh, if I have zero goals, but I'm doing whatever I need to do to help the team win, then good. Because uh, it's a team game, and in the end of the end of the stretch here, the championship's the end goal. So if you know whatever it takes to get that championship back to Macon is uh, what you know I want to help with, and you know it's not I can't do everything myself, but I can try to do as much as I can. Right. And speaking of doing as much as you can, I noticed a scar on your face. Um, we've seen plenty of shiners from this season. I don't know if we've seen any scars though. Is that from Thursday night? No, uh, this was from uh, last year. I got okay. the skate in the face last year, so. Okay. Was that, uh, that was no, that was in Knoxville. Gotcha. But Thursday night, you did get into a scrap with Nick Wright. He's yeah. an enforcer. Uh, he leads the league in penalty minutes, and he's a big boy. Uh, not, uh, the Evansville website has him listed at six foot four, two hundred and fifteen. And to me, that sounds like a gross underestimate. Can you elaborate on that scrap a little bit? Yeah, I well. The guy approached me in warm-ups asking if I needed a fight tonight, and I told him, I said, man, I'm pretty banged up. Like, I really don't. And he goes, all right, so I can just play tonight? I go, yeah, like, do me a favor and just keep it clean, and we're good. And he goes, all right, thanks. And then he comes back, and he goes, Rons, he goes, man, I just realized if I get another fight, I'm leading the league in fights. Like, is it still no? <laughs> and I'm like, oh. I'm like, well, come talk to me. Like, we'll see how the game's going. And he goes, all right. And then he was, he was running at guys like a moron. He was chirping talls, and I just had enough. And I was like, you know what, like, right? Or like, and he asked me, and I was like, yeah, like, now, like, let's go. We're going now. And mm -hmm. it didn't, I mean, it honestly didn't work out in, in my favor, at stepping on that stick and looking like an idiot. But um, <laughs> it is what it is. And he, he that counts. Yeah, I mean, he, uh, he finally settled down, and he got his fight in. And granted, I wish I would have done a little better and gave the fans more of a show, but... Uh, yeah, that's how that one started. <laughs> yeah. In your defense, that's uh, quite the adversary you had. And, uh, you know, stepping on the stick, that, that's unfortunate. Yeah. But that does happen. Um, those, those staged fights, when I say staged, I don't mean fake. I mean staged in the sense that they were planned. It's not a reactionary fight. Um, those are always fun to watch when there's mutual agreement before it happens, right before the face-off and the puck drops and all of a sudden uh, two big boys going at it. Uh, Zach, I want to address this next question to you. Uh, you were promoted uh, to alternate captain uh, during, uh, shortly after your return from Toledo. Um, it's your, just your second season, uh, second pro season, second season with the Mayhem. Was that something you expected, uh, being in just your second campaign here? Uh, no, not exactly. Uh, I kind of just have the same mindset coming to the rink every day, regardless of uh, that kind of thing or leadership. So um, I'm going to lead the same way that I would lead if I was a first-year player, if I've been here for multiple years that's just kind of who I am so yeah that's about it on that yeah and speaking of leadership you're sort of the the leader of the blue line the mayhem have a really young defense core uh coming into the season there was sort of a lot of uh, hype and glamour about the team's scoring potential uh with a lot of big name players returning that have been you know high scoring players in this league for years your Jake Trasks and your John Seamers and Stathis and Dakota Kletcha and others um the D core on the other hand not as many uh, sort of veteran players like that. Um, and yet the calling card for the Mayhem this season has been their ability to keep pucks out of their net. Uh, they've improved a lot in that respect uh, from last year to this year. You were here last year. What do you suppose has been different? Uh, I think we've just been kind of more consistent like back there. I think guys are getting used to playing with each other a lot more. I know that some guys have been in and out of the lineup with little injuries or call-ups and that kind of thing. But... I think the forwards definitely help us a lot, and uh, we had very good goaltending as well, so it kind of all helps hand in hand of defending the net. Yeah, we have, and uh, you guys missed it last week. The uh, goaltenders, Tanner Creel and Ian Silvis, were both here. Goalies always put on a show and stuff like this, but uh, it's all right. I'm sure we'll have them back at some point uh, for the rest of the season. Uh, that's all the questions I have. Uh, did you guys hit? Somebody no. had to say something? No. Okay. Uh, that's all the questions I have. Uh, this time we're going to open the floor up to discussion, questions, comments, concerns, anything you guys would like to add or ask these fellows up here. Um, be our guest. The floor is yours. Go ahead.
trying to think of prank. <laughs> like <laughs> ones we can tell you guys, or? <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, I don't know, there's little ones we can do, like in the locker room. Zach doesn't even know that I've been doing this lately or that I'm the guy, but I've been shoving gum in his gloves so before he goes out to practice. So he's got to dig him out of his fingers. And uh, that's just a fun little one to do just in the morning to get the mood up a little bit. Um, there used to be ones you could do, like snip a guy's laces so he's in the middle of tying his skates and he's got to redo his skates and everything. But our equipment guy would get pretty pissed off at us, so we can't do that anymore. <laughs> not, with, not with Bonesy. No. Bones. Going up um, but, I mean, that's a couple off the top of my head on uh, herbs. I don't... I've been known pranks this year, trying well, to be a little more uh, serious. Right. <laughs> Bones yeah, would pull the hair out of his mohawk with something like that. Right. Yeah. For sure. I mean, <laughs> just, just little fun ones. I mean, there's, there's pranks on the road and stuff, but nothing crazy. <laughs> Good question. Sean. Yeah, when I, uh, <clears throat> I mean, heck, my first year in the league, coach was uh, captain of the first team I was on. <laughs> um, but, I mean, just, I mean, watching from back when coach played, like, coach was a hard guy to play against. Um, he was always working hard. He would throw. Um, he was, I mean, the guy could shoot and score from probably anywhere. Still can. Um, but I, uh, I, uh just I mean, watching like watching coach when he was uh, my captain in Pensacola for a bit, and then um, just guys like Cole Rui, one of coaches nemesis, was my other captain, and um, seeing how they carried themselves on and off the ice, and I just try to you know support or um, represent the team as best I can, whether it's on the ice, off the ice, in the community, whatever it is, and. Now that, you know, one of the older guys, it, it sucks realizing you're one of the older guys. It's always fun being a young guy, right? Um, <laughs> but there's young guys that come in, like me and Nick Minerva is 22. This new guy, Igor's just turned 20 or something like that. And, you know, they, and, I mean, even uh, the guy that just came out of college, like, I mean, I was talking to him at practice today, you know, like just keep her going, get the feet moving, whatever it is, and just kind of taking a leadership role. And, um, again, you know, whatever you can do to help the team, uh, you know, I'll do it. So um, it's a little different, right? But I had, you know, four years to watch and learn, and now I'm just using the knowledge I've gained over my past seasons to help this team now. Yeah. We sort of dropped this bit of trivia last week, but since you guys weren't here last week, we'll sort of reiterate it. But the first game the Mayhem played at the centerplex, Coach Thomas was on the other team, and he actually scored a hat trick. Scored the first goal ever against the mayhem in our building. So there's that. Two yeah. <laughs> four. <laughs> All right, good questions. <laughs> yes, sir. I was that number for a year. That's a great question. I'm thinking, I'm asking my guys the exact same thing. <laughs> More net Because traffic. I tell them that a million times. Um, so the only thing I can do really is try to bring that into practice, kind of drill it in them um, every chance I can get. Um, I thought we have been doing a better job of it the last few games, but um, that one stretch, I mean, it was, it was pretty bad. Uh, watching video and you know, you can see it every game or four or five games in a row. So I know that one week I pretty much did it every, there was at least one or two drills every day of practice that was um, just aimed at that, at driving to the net and stopping. So, um, but we have been doing a little better job of it. And um, I thought in Evansville, I mean, I told the guys if we do it and we score six goals. So, um, and again in Huntsville, we did it a few times. So, mm -hmm. but that's one thing. Um, I'm glad you said that because uh, I've seen it and I've been trying to get these guys to to do, do it, it right. So um, we'll try to do a better job, obviously, of being consistent with that. And I'm going to keep drilling it into their to their heads. So. Yeah. It's not easy. It's not fun. It's not a place on the ice you want to go to. Um, it's called yeah. the most dangerous area on the ice for a reason. You're yeah. almost guaranteed to take a slash, a cross check when nobody's looking, hit to the back, and sustain a few bruises for the sake of getting your team a good scoring chance. Um, but that's a really good question. That's no, definitely... Uh, uh, yeah. so. Sean? Uh, 
herbs. Do you feel like that influenced your decision at all to come to Macon, or how does that, like, having known him from before, like... Yeah, uh, that's how I actually got down here. Uh, I was talking to him in the summer. I hadn't played uh, at school the past year, so his first year here I wasn't playing hockey, so I ended up talking to him in the summer, and that's how I ended up coming down here last Christmas was through John. Do you feel like knowing him like, helped to make it easier to come? Yeah, for sure. That was. Yeah, I probably would never even have heard of Macon, honestly, because I don't really have many friends from out east or anything like that. I'm from out west, so I didn't really know much about it until I, John was talking to me about it, and that's how I kind of found out about it. Did you bring your hockey bag with you on the way down? Yeah. I got lost, though. <laughs> did they do anything like we do for John Seymour with the John Cena remix that they did? It? Did they do that in Northern Michigan? No, they didn't, anything have, like much, it? They didn't have anything like that. Mm. It would have been good, though, in college. Yeah. <laughs> no, it would have, for sure. No. <laughs> that would have been a good thing for him in school. That would have been hilarious. Uh, Zach, you brought up your hometown. Uh, it's Bow Valley, Alberta. Is that? That's a myth. It's a myth? Yeah, Bow Valley isn't a place. It's like a general area. Okay. So what is your hometown? Uh, I'm originally from Calgary. Uh, that's where I was born and raised, but I moved out to Kelowna, British Columbia when I was about 12 years old to pursue a hockey academy. Nice. So Rockets. Out west. Rockets. Yeah, that was okay. the WHL team there. Right. Anything else? Appreciate nope. that. Yeah. Bale's yes, sir. I would like that also, too. <laughs> you know, uh, anytime you can get 30, 40, 30 to 40 shots on that, I mean, obviously you want the shots closer to the net because then you have a better chance of scoring. But um, I believe it. I believe from shooting from everywhere and getting their goalie to. You know, move move all game and tire them out or whatever. But um, that's another another um, thing that we've did better at. I think you know. I think a couple games we've hit 40, 40 shots or so. So that's always a good thing. And um, if you're talking more of our defensemen, I would love them to shoot every time they get to the blue line and get pucks through. So um, sometimes it's hard. I mean, you got guys coming at you blocking shots, and especially when you're playing those teams that are. Um, you know, fast and are willing to put their body on the line to, to block shots. So, um, no, I definitely would take more longer shots for sure. This is for the players. Uh, you guys have played hockey too much your entire lives. So, what, what's your favorite, I guess, best hockey memory from playing? Go ahead. Oh, man. You can go first. Uh, my best memory probably from playing was my first year of uh, junior hockey. I played in Penticton, which is just a small town uh, in British Columbia, and we won a national championship there. So that's probably the best uh, memory I have, most vivid memory I have for sure. I don't know if I have a best memory. I mean, well, I've been, we've been playing it for 20-plus years. There's a lot of things that I've loved th my, through my journey so far. Um, I guess maybe my best memory could, I guess it could have been my first pro contract that I signed. Um, that was pretty awesome. I mean, <clears throat> I got a call in one summer and it was actually another one of coaches teams, it was Fort Wayne. Um, they called and asked if I wanted to come to camp and um, made it through camp and uh, signed Al Sims as the coach. And it was actually the lockout year and they didn't have an affiliate that year. So I was actually really fortunate until two days after camp when they got an affiliate and 14 guys came from the American League to the team so that's I met coach uh, right after that in Pensacola but um, that was I mean that's a pretty awesome pretty awesome moment I got to call my dad and you know tell him hey like this team's interested and because he put a lot of energy and time in helped me whether it's off ice training on ice driving me to the rink coaching teams I was on whatever it was he was always there so that was, I mean, that's probably my best memory or favorite one. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Not you, Seth. I wasn't talking to you. <laughs> yeah. So you got to be an assistant coach for a game, kind yeah. of in a rush and in a pinch. But, I mean, what was your experience like, and do you think that, that could be something you could do after you have to hang them up? 
Yeah, no, I, it was fun. It got the win, not a big deal. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it got to uh, yell at herbs a little bit. Um, didn't look quite as good as Coach did on the bench, but uh, I mean, you really didn't have to do a whole lot. It wasn't like I was really juggling lines or anything. We had 5D, right? So I'd tell a certain couple guys, hey, like if you're, you know, herbs and can't remember who I comparing herbs and are we even around actually? I don't even think you were here. Yeah, I was here for your win. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I remember. All right. Um, but I mean, I just tell a couple guys if they're having a good shift, like, hey, get ready to go. Like, you guys are playing well, whatever it is. Um, Coach, you know, had the heavy, the heavy end of the stick there, but you know, he actually looked at me. He goes, "Hey, man, that's near the end of the bench, so give her." And, um, but I mean, I don't know, it was fun. I like coaching. In the summer, I I coached like, some little guys, and but in, eventually, I'd like to take it up. Coach told me you went through way more gum than you were expecting. Is that true? It I, was at my. He, you know, he I, I, I it, warned them because they always give me. Uh, <laughs> They always see me grab handfuls of gum and stick in my pocket, and then that game I see them like double fist and gum. <laughs> well, I actually had a process to it. I had one on the way out to the bench, and then every TV timeout I put a new piece in. The team was doing good, so I'm like, oh, I gotta, I can't, I gotta keep doing it, right? So every period I did it. Um, but my jaw was sore, and I told coach, I'm like, man, like I had so much gum, my jaw is killing me right now. And he's like, I told you, man. <laughs> so it was good though. Uh. Yeah, there is a lot. I can confirm there's a lot of gum in that uh, on that bench because oh. we were just shooting for pucks and paws yesterday. And, oh yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, Abby's dog there. She was trying to eat some of the some of the gum on the bench. Yeah, like elf. <laughs> Gotta get some oh, clean that elf. Up. Yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> Anything else, guys? Yeah. All right. Uh, for everyone. Oh. oh. Okay. Uh, like ever? ever yeah. oh. What if I have two? <laughs> Scott Stevens and Mike Madano. They were my, they were growing growing up. I was a huge. Well, I was a Devils fan just by virtue of Stevens. Um, it's odd that I play defense now because he was a <laughs> yeah. D man and I was I was a forward growing up. But I just he absolutely hammered people, and so I didn't model my game after him, but. I, I enjoy that part of the game. Um, it always helps too when my dad would, you know, if I turned away from a hit, he's in the be- he's on the bench or in the stands screaming at me like, why is he still standing? Because I didn't knock him over. But, um, <laughs> and then um, Mike Madonna played for the North Stars. They moved away from Minnesota before I was born, and then uh, I watched him play in Dallas um, with Brett Hull too. So that was I, mean, I like those two guys. Uh, I'd have to go with probably Nicholas Lidstrom. Uh, he's a defenseman for the Detroit Red Wings. He's arguably probably one of the best D-mans of all time. He's never gets beat, puts up points, solid in all areas of his game. Um, I have two. Uh, I would go Wendell Clark probably. He's probably my first first guy growing up. Or I should say Lemieux. Probably both those guys. Clark, Wendell Clark was just that guy that... Kind of did everything. He was a leader. He fought. He scored. Um, and then Lemieux was, to me, the greatest player to ever play. I was more of a Lemieux fan than Gretzky growing up, for sure. Terry O'Reilly, the Tasmanian devil. <laughs> I know. I can go way back. I <laughs> thought I'd keep it like 80s. When Scott, I was born. Uh, Scott Stevens, when he was in his prime, he beat up my old boss. Nice. nice. I, like that. I, I good, enjoyed watching that video. Good, good for Scott. Yeah. Yeah, I know. My, my old boss was Paul Baxter. I don't. I mean, you probably know him, Zach. He played on Calgary. You uh, probably heard of him. I don't remember. No, he was he was a little before your time when he played. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We're going Jerome and Gimlin days. Yeah. yeah. He, he was the another Jimmy. one. He was another yeah. one. I was gonna say I was a big Iggy fan. But That's right. There's a lot so, of great players out there. Guy's an animal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, for it. Yeah. Cause you said your two greatest heroes were Jerome Ginla and Stone Cold Steve Austin. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I remember these things. All right. Uh, Stone Cold was huge, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, was big, I was a big Stone Cold fan. Or we're talking hockey players, so that's what yeah. Did you want me to answer this question, too? Or no? Okay. That doesn't sound like a yes, but Jonathan Taves. <laughs> 
Jonathan Taves. Jonathan Taves, yeah. Captain Serious. Nice. Captain Serious. That's solid. me. Jake would be happy with that choice. Yeah, he would. Isn't that? Oh yeah, that is Trask's favorite. Uh, yeah. yeah. That's right. All right. Anything else, guys? Yes, ma'am. Uh, ice? <laughs> <laughs> um, jokes, just jokes. Probably um, a scoreboard, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, drum would try to be pretty nice. Um, or even like a big screen on one end. Um, I don't know. I just, I honestly, I, our building's tough to play in when there's en- when there's enough people there who hate the other team and love us. Um, but I feel like that's like with any rink. Um, a lot of people hate playing in Knoxville. Honestly, I actually love it. Um, things happen so fast because it's smaller. But I don't know. I don't know if I'd really change our rank. I like how I like the old and the history, and um, I just would love if the ice was frozen more. We're in the south. Yeah, I know. Every team's in the south, man. Yeah, look at the ice. <laughs> yeah. Last Thursday before the game started, it was so humid in there that it was. Yeah, you probably saw it, but the boards were all fogged up. I was worried we'd be swimming instead of skating. I don't really but know what it meant. That does happen. <laughs> I would Herbs? Any, anything you want to? Scoreboard was mine. Yeah. Um, What's that? Oh, oh that's, yeah. Yep, yeah. that's right. Oh, no, but yeah, if we would, I would want yeah. to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We just, uh, the whole front office staff just went up to Huntsville, so we saw a few things that we liked there, too. Um, I mean, it's, it's hard to compare our facility to that one just because it's... Um, a lot more modern. Um, everything from you know the stands, the bleachers, to the the front office and the the doors, everything. Um, so you know, just I don't necessarily think new amenities are necessary, but you know, polishing up some of the you know areas and and you know making them look a little bit more modern, I think, is something we could improve on. But thank you. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. Oh, you want me to say? A oh, of? I mean, you don't have yeah. to. But <laughs> <laughs> no, obviously, I I love our building. I, mm-hmm. I do. I like the old. It's just got that feel to it. And, um, obviously, a new scoreboard would be nice. And yeah, I think honestly, if you just did that, some new boards and glass, that rink would look pretty sweet. So, uh, with the new sound system, you can already tell the difference. And um, but even the outside, the inside look, it's just got that tough look to it. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I personally like it. So. Mm-hmm. All right, guys. Well, do we have anything else? Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah. yeah, Yeah. good question. Thank you. Appreciate it. Guys out. The Idea Factory is done producing. All right. Um, Well, appreciate your questions, guys. We're going to move on to the last segment of the show here and uh, basically just preview the upcoming weekend. Uh, Thursday's our college night. Um, We've got $8 tickets for college students, uh, $10 for general admission. Uh, College groups get tickets for $10 a piece as well. That includes free hats and experience upgrade. Uh, If anyone's tuned in or interested in doing a group package, um, that's basically if you have 10 people or more, uh, you get discounted tickets, $13 a piece. Uh, Also, free hats and an experience upgrade. Uh, We've got one more family four-pack coming up this season on Saturday, March 16th, but uh, that's getting ahead a little bit. Uh, Friday, we're hosting Fayetteville. Sorry, Thursday, we're hosting Birmingham. uh, Friday and Saturday, we're hosting Fayetteville. Um, So that's the the team you coached against, right, Ron? Against Fayetteville, yeah. Yeah, that's right. So they'll be back uh, Friday, Saturday, last time this season. Uh, Friday's our princess night. Saturday's our pucks and paws night. Uh, if anyone happens to have a wiener dog, uh, registration for the wiener dog races is still open. That's going to be the first intermission on Friday night's game. Uh, sorry, Saturday night's game. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so that's this weekend. Um, Coach, a couple of last questions for you. You kind of hinted at the, on the status of Jimmy Sober. Um, what, if he's able to return, what does his return mean for the mayhem going forward? Um, uh, uh, Soper's return is huge. You can tell when when he went down, we lost a lot of energy, kind of energy every shift. He's a guy who brings it every shift. Um, he doesn't shy away from hitting guys. He's 
mm. you know, he's on the bench yelling. So he just brings that, that energy that uh, we haven't had in a while. So to get him back, it's, it's going to give our guys a boost. And um, we well, can't wait to get him back. Sure. Yeah, yeah, we've definitely missed him. Um, I want to talk to you about uh, Birmingham a little bit and some of the challenges that they pose. Um, you talked about how much better the team is when we get a lot of shots on net. That one, I want to say it was January 11th or 12th, it was right after the new year, um, Maverick Parks just stole the show. Uh, I think he had a 47 save shutout. Um, the Mayhem still, they outshot Birmingham. I think they doubled them in shots. That was sort of an anomaly. Um, is that going to be the same message? Is anything going to change, even though we're facing a goalie that's, uh, that's really been near the top of the SPHL all season? Yeah, no, I mean, that's almost every team you play against, you want to have that, but especially against, mm -hmm. uh, you know, one of the top goalies, or if not the top goalie in the league, you definitely want to get traffic in front of him and make him uncomfortable. And, um, you know, you're fine losing those games as long as you're, you're working hard and putting pucks to the net. And I understand you're going to run into those games where – um, you know, a goalie's going to steal the show. And, I mean, that's what that's why he's at the top of the, you know, the stats is for goalies. And mm -hmm. um, So, yeah, it's the same message. Get pucks to the net. Um, get bodies. Uh, you know, even if you have to bump them a little bit just to get them off his game, it's only going to help us. So. Yep, yep. And then uh, Fayetteville's goalie just got called up, or one of their two goalies just got called up to the ECHL. Um, they're probably going to be going with Dylan Kelly, I would think, both Friday and Saturday. That's the team that uh, that Coach Ronsberg got his coaching debut against and got the W. Does that increase any pressure for Coach Michael and yourself to come home with four points after that weekend? Um, or I can just sit Ronsberg and bring him on the bench. No, <laughs> See you, Mike. I could do that. No, no I, I would keep Mike's there. I would just have two assistants. But um, no, I mean, it, uh, we we got to get these points regardless. Mm, so. Right. Um, Obviously, I need Ronsberg on the ice and um, doing his thing and keep keep the guys going and doing what he's doing. And I need Herbs to to man the back end there and, and um, put together a good weekend. So. All right. Well, appreciate it, guys. Thank you, Coach. Uh, to all of you guys who asked questions, we really appreciate it. They were good questions again. Uh, we hope to keep this momentum going. We've got another show Tuesday night, every Tuesday, right here at the Rookery at 6.30 p.m. Uh, guys, again, really appreciate you stopping by. Hope you uh, have enjoyed your meal, and, and we hope uh, we answered all your questions. So thank you. Yes, thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you.